Sean, you know, one of the great things that I've discovered with Williams Warner is I don't really have to think much when I do the recipe of beer because everything comes in a neat little kit, doesn't it? Correct. We've done a lot of work on getting the ingredients right too. So we get our liquid malts from here in New Zealand, we get our dry malt from the US, we get our yeast from Europe. I don't really have to measure anything. This is exactly measured already for my brew cake tank, so right? The only thing you need to measure is the amount of water that you eventually put in up to 10 litres. Simple as that. So I just start with a little bit of warm, generally about a third, and then I switch to cold. We're activating the yeast. So these are little uh, dried yeast cells, and what we're really doing is putting them into a a liquid at a temperature that makes them happy and gets them going, because these yeast will multiply uh, significantly that's through, the, idea. through the brewing process. Yeah, yeah. that's your idea. So I'm just going to give it a shake so we don't actually keep most of the yeast. Cut the, cut the top off there. And give it a bit of a swirl. And that's it. We're just going to put that aside now. So the yeast becomes happy. How do I know they're ready? Uh, you'll just see that you'll actually see it starting to happen now. They're starting to rehydrate and... Looks like they're foaming. Yeah, and that, and that will kind of happen a little bit more over time, over the next 20 minutes or so. Remember we've got our yeast here, we've got the butterfly clip valve closed, otherwise we'd be in all sorts of trouble. We've got what was boiling water in here, which will still be a really nice temperature to mix this malt. So the liquid malt likes to be mixed at quite a high temperature, so I would say, you know, 80 degrees, 90 degrees, 100 degrees to get a good mix. That out. On a clean surface. On a clean surface. Look at that. That's all going in. It's all good. It's the yeast loves this stuff. And then we're just going to get the last little bit out with some with some really hot water. I'm going to start stirring that now. And the idea is just to make sure all of that goes into a solution. You don't, if you forget this step, what happens is when you put your yeast bottle on, open the butterfly valve, you end up with a big glob of this dumping on the yeast, which doesn't make them happy. No. no you want, we want happy yeast. That's overload. That's a nice stir. It's pretty hot. Mm -hmm. We'll go over that. All we're trying to do is just get the, the last bits here. Whoops, and then on the top. It's nice and empty now. Awesome, good. We've got one more pack of ingredients left. <laughs> That's right. So we're going to um, add our dry malt, and that likes to go in at a cooler temperature. Still likes to be about 40 degrees optimally. One thing to be careful of is you don't want to spray um, intensely into the middle of the liquid because it will foam up and you don't really want that foam at the beginning so thanks that's correct we'll so that's just cold water you put in there yep just yep. cold just gonna add a couple of these and then we'll, we'll add the dry malt So you will get some foam, always happens, but it's just it's just minimal. So we'll take the scissors, again, give that a little shake just to make sure you've got it all down the bottom there. Cut a really nice big hole, because this stuff likes to flow pretty quickly. And in with the dry malt. So now, we give that a mix. With the dry malt, you will get lumps. It's just natural. Uh, sometimes when you open up the butterfly valve, you'll see some of those lumps drop down into the sediment bottle. Within 12 hours, maybe 24 at most, but they'll be gone because the yeast will get onto them. There we go. So a good tip is we, what we want to do now is we want to actually fill this to the 10 litre mark. And you can kind of look at it as you're filling and you can get a bit of an idea. But if you actually use your spatula and you make a mark on your spatula at the 10 litre mark once you've measured it once, all you're doing is filling to the base of the spatula. Just makes it, you don't have to think about it then. There right? you go. Well, there's one top tip. <laughs> Good. So we got it all filled up there? Yep. 
Right, my hands are nice and clean. And then and I'm just gonna make sure that's firmly on. Mm -hmm. It's another top tip. You don't want that falling out no. after you start brewing. The final step is, now suddenly this is heavy, is we need to get our yeast going. And uh, you're gonna connect that at the bottom. There you go. Nice and tight. Just, mm -hmm. just you know, just grip tight, but tight. Final checks and balances. Temperature-wise, where are we sitting here? 20, 21 degrees Celsius. So we're gonna have happy yeast. They're not yep. gonna go in for a shock when nah, they're in here. They're good. We've got nice nutrients all done properly. We've mixed it effectively. We haven't set the VRPV yet, but that's still yep. coming. Um, so let it drip. So what we're gonna do now is just open the butterfly valves. Mm -hmm. And those yeast are now swimming free in sugar. Sugary liquid, they love that. So last important tip, we tight, tighten the VPRV valve up when we sanitize because we wanted to build pressure. We take it off four, two turns, but it's kind of four half turns because you're doing one, two, three, four. And Just, what that will do is as the pressure builds up, it gives it a bit of an escape pod. Correct. So it works like a pressure cooker as well. Yep. And, and some of that excess gas can escape. But you've got to monitor as well. We put on our um, pressure gauge and you know within about you know 12 hours to 24 hours that will start to build up some good pressure. So most of the beers that we do typically run between uh, you know 1.6 and 1.8. Hey, I, I do some of my beers at two if I want a really carbonated lager and a lot of my beers down at 1.6 if I'm doing an ale that I just don't want to have quite as much Carbonation. Let's find a spot for it because we have to keep it at that temperature, that happy temperature for the Correct. yeast. But 22, 25 is a good place. How long am I going to wait for this? So what we do is we actually keep an eye on the sediment bottle now. Four days is probably a good time to start looking at the sediment bottle. What you're looking to see in there is that yeast is settling and that there is no activity. And the activity that you see is fine bubbles rising out of the bed of yeast because that's the yeast still active and going up to grab some more sugar and eat it and come back down again. So what you're looking for is a, a bed of yeast, dormant. If you're wondering about whether your beer is finished, all you do simply is just take some pressure out by pressing that button. Mm -hmm. You know that the beer has been sitting at 1.5, it drops to 1.4. And then the next morning, if it's still at 1.4, your beer is finished. If it's back at 1.5, it's still doing something, you can let it go a bit longer. And that's how you get going with the Williams Wall. Yep.